hey guys welcome back to rocket gyan my fellow space tubers and today i really want to say you one thing that uh, we um kind of messed up the timing here because uh, not my not me uh, the rocket lab actually messed up the timing because they what they used to do is uh, they used to start the stream they don't uh, actually start the stream but just you know have that a song going on and then they start the stream but today they have already started the stream so i'll be very quick uh, about uh, uh, this mission today so uh, welcome back to the stream guys hi kenneth hi uh, medcar tk uh, welcome back so today is a very special day for rocket lab because they will be launching their electron rocket uh, from the us soil that's right they will be trying okay so uh, they will be trying to launch the uh, what do you say okay they will be trying to launch their rocket from the us soil from the flight facility in virginia that's the ball of flight facility and interesting fact is that uh, uh, it this this flight this this uh, site has been selected because uh, Th that was the requirement from the u.s air force or u.s space force uh you can say that u.s space force to be precise and defense sector because they wanted some uh, uh a reliable partner who can launch their uh, technology demonstrators and other spy satellites kind of missions at a very rapid rate so they had to you know uh acquire a small sat launcher which is which can be quick and can be you can say ready on demand so this was done this was um, that's why it was chosen because previously it was, these type of missions were launched uh, by minotaur or the antares antares is still flying the minotaur i don't think so is is going to fly now so yeah uh, this is supposed to happen and we today we finally will be seeing the electron launch from the us soil it's a us company but it was uh, launching from new zealand strange strange but uh, now uh, that won't be happening so hey movie clips uh, uh, I, I am good uh, how are you so um, let me just uh, be very quick so this is a two stage rocket we all know about that powered by nine rutherford engines uh, which is you can see here uh, powered by nine rutherford engine uh, here you can see this these rutherford engines are electric pump fed engines uh, and uh, they have uh, kerolox as its fuel so uh, electric pump fed means uh, the turbo pump here is actually controlled by an electric motor and that's why it is very simple to design and make and then the other uh, the second stage is powered by a vacuum optimized rutherford engine is still powered by uh, uh, the electric pump fed engine and that's why it's a, it has a very unique uh, thing that happens uh, with the rocket labs electron when it goes to the orbit that's a battery hot swap which in which it swaps uh, swaps the battery power from one battery pack to the another and drops the another other battery pack which has been drained so yeah this is how it looks like now talking about uh, the um other thing here yeah so so uh now uh, let me just go to the orbit characteristics so we'll, they are, we are going today at a 550 km circular orbit with three satellites on board inclination of 40.5 degree which means it is not going to sun synchronous orbit and the payload uh, capacity for today is just 90 kilograms it could it can take much heavier payloads but today it is not doing that also there will be no recovery mission today uh, and the customer is hawk i360 so this hawk i360 you can see is actually a unique company which uh, in uh, in the sense that it monitors the radio frequencies the rfs the uh, the there are so many bands of rfs vhf uhf and all those things so this is a uh, my hawkeye 360 is a company which actually monitors it and when during the war when the signal got uh, interrupted uh, in ukraine this was the company which actually monitored it and detected it that it has happened and it was doing uh, deliberately deliberately done in uh, ukraine 
so um, this is a kind of a very interesting startup and they are doing a very interesting job because uh, earlier we used to have a geospatial in information geospatial intelligence by using the earth observation data uh, like uh, infrared uh, uv and all those things the, but the radio frequency have not been observed yet and we can now expect some geospatial intelligence from radio frequency also so this is the hawk eye which is supposed to do that and then we have the mission profile so the mission profile is pretty much the same so here you can see the liftoff happens at t0 then uh, we have the miko stage separation then the second engine startup the the fairing separation the battery hot swap uh, then the finally we have second in okay so battery cutoff the seco happens the stage to separation from kick stage so there is a kick stage also for today and then we have a curie engine which will start but and the curie engine will stop at uh, 56 minutes and 18 seconds so curie engine start and stop is still very much ahead we won't i don't think so we'll be having uh, the coverage for that live because uh, rocket lab is very sensitive for their curie engine uh, they don't want that to come uh, uh, in public so yeah there's that now talking about the launch visibility map so if you live nearby uh the this area the virginia you know the flight facility the ball of flight facility many rocket launches have happened here and the very uh famous one the explosion also has happened of the entire one so uh, yeah there's that uh other than that we have zero to 30 seconds so it's a very a uh, big launch field view you can see all the way uh the, we have uh, you can see i'm not so into the u.s geography but you can see the map and the, i can tell you that the visibility is actually much higher than what we have expected in the previous launches so 0 to 30 seconds in that blue dot 30 to 60 in this green then we have 60 to 19 yellow then 90 to 120 and then 120 to 150 and 150 to 180 so it's a pretty wide view, uh, field of view map so you can uh, just uh, have a look at it wherever you live if you live nearby don't miss this opportunity to catch this launch from the virginia so hi marcus welcome to the stream okay uh, let me just uh, uh, change it to these live stream now and incredible support from the state of Virginia to bring this new launch capability to the eastern shore for the nation in under 11 months with our partners in Virginia space we built a launch complex too that includes all the critical infrastructure to support a launch of Electron in addition to the launch pad we've also built the integration and control facility about eight miles from the launch pad itself uh, this facility supports uh, parallel processing of multiple electrons, uh, multiple clean rooms for payload processing, as well as houses our mission control team. With Launch Complex 2 now operational, uh, we have enhanced our global launch capability to over 130 launch opportunities per year. Uh, this provides small satellites. Hey, Sean, thank you so much for that 499, man. Uh, really appreciate it. That would definitely pay for my coffee because uh, I would need it right now. It's 4 a.m. here and uh, oh, I'm feeling very sleepy. But okay, well, let's just enjoy this launch for now and uh, let's see what do we have in store for us. I know our team has worked so hard and is so proud to be here in Virginia, bringing responsive and reliable launch to the Eastern Shore. Now, Jane, you'll be familiar with the amount of work that goes into bringing our launch campaign to the pad quickly for those types of missions. That's right. To get launches away weeks or even days apart requires streamlined systems and a proven, experienced team. After 32 missions, we have exactly that. 
Since April of this year, we've had an Electron mission every month. The fastest turnaround time between missions was just 15 days when we launched the capstone mission to the moon for NASA and followed it up for a mission with the NRO just days later. Yeah, that one was really a fantastic hey, effort from the team. Now, the since we've got this view, and whoa, just look at that. that you take us through an explainer of Electron. I'd be happy to. Let's work our way up from the bottom to the top. Electron is a three-stage launch vehicle that stands 18 meters or 59 feet tall. It's a unique rocket with a couple of world-first titles to its name. The first is that Electron has a fully carbon composite tank structure, making it strong but still very lightweight. Another first for an Electron is its use of 3D printed electric pump-fed engines to power the rocket to space. These are the Rutherford engines, and together, nine of them propel the first stage, while a tenth powers the second stage of Electron. They use batteries to power the electric motor behind the engine's rotodynamic pump, and were the first engines with an electric pump feed cycle to fly to space. The engines are structurally the same across both the first and second stages, with the exception of a larger expansion nozzle on the second stage engine for operating in the vacuum of space. Electron also includes an 11th engine, a tiny machine by comparison, called the Curie engine. This engine powers the rocket's third stage, what we call the kick stage. Since the Curie is a relightable engine, we can burn it multiple times to bring our customers' satellites to their precise destination in orbit. Nestled on top of this, inside the fairing, are the three Hawkeye 360 satellites for this evening's launch in just about 25 minutes' time, and that's our Electron launch vehicle. So, uh, guys, let me give you an update that um, we, okay, so, uh, yeah, the countdown is still proceeding. That's not a problem, but um, we are looking some, having some problems with the upper winds right now. So, uh, the upper winds level are red for the on-time liftoff, but the teams are monitoring it. So, we'll have to wait and see whether that turns out green, uh, but... Uh, we have a two hour launch window so we will be having some time if we have to hold for now we couldn't miss the chance to watch electrons lift off from across the marsh in person but for those of you tuning into the broadcast from the comfort of home my uh, working on the rail road in norfolk at this very moment so glad to have clear skies whoa um, you should be able to see this then and i am hoping that it would be a great uh, sunrise in the midnight, not midnight, 6 p.m. I guess, 6 or 8 p.m. in uh, there. I don't know. I'm not so sure about that time, but still, sunrise in the night sky. That should I. That should be sufficient for you. If you're here in Chincoteague with us too, there are plenty of viewing spots throughout the county. The launch viewing area at the NASA Wallops Visitor Center is one of the only public sites with a clear view of the launch pad, just seven miles from the range. Once we're off the pad, though, you'll be able to see well from Chincoteague Island, including the Robert Reed Waterfront Park located on Main Street, south down Main Street to Curtis Merritt Harbor, and the bike trail near the Museum of Chincoteague Island. A reminder that we could be a little bit delayed here on the broadcast, so while you're sticking with us, keep an eye on the skies from around T minus one minute on the broadcast if you're viewing in person. Now, a lot of different departments across the state of Virginia have come together to get Electron to the pad for its debut launch from LC2. Between Virginia Space, NASA, and Rocket Lab, this is a joint effort that marks a new beginning for commercial space on the eastern shore. Let's hear more about what it took to get to the pad today. This represents a historic moment in our history, in the long and storied history of Wallops with over 16,000 rocket launches. The Starling launch today represents a new era of resilient and responsive access to space. That kind of capability to offer that to our nation, to offer it to the commercial sector, to be able to put satellites into orbit. 
it's an exciting opportunity for not only the commercial aspect, but also for the nation. Bringing together. Oh, where that? Uh, uh, I guess that was Gus Fring, right? <laughs> he looked like that a lot. Along with our partners uh, in Virginia with uh, the Mid Atlantic Regional Spaceport. The AFTS serves as a springboard for increasing the cadence of launches while providing a safe launch uh, where it doesn't rely on human beings. It reduces costs and, and then allows us to launch more frequently, increasing our efficiency, not just at Wallops, but at all ranges across the United States. So flying with AFTS from Wallops opens a whole new capability for rapid uh, response, rapid succession, and lessens the, the mission time support to spool up for a mission. Uh, so we're very excited to demonstrate this here at Wallops for the very first time. Integration uh, effort and all the uh, supporting effort has been a tremendous load of work from the team uh, to make it happen. And uh, we are here, we finally have made it and uh, very proud of the team for the work they've put together to make AFTS happen. We are most thrilled that we were actually able to build LC2 pad. We built it from groundbreaking to full operational status in 11 months. Now to be able to see a rocket actually launch off of the pad upon which we built. So working here at Wallops with NASA team and Virginia Space team, I, I feel like it's a unified team. Uh, whether you're wearing a blue shirt or a black shirt or whatever color and whatever lapel pin, we're one unified team. We are approaching the T minus 12 minute count to that when soon our operators will run through the final go, no go poll by the launch director for this mission, Michael Pearson. This is the team's final status check of the system they are responsible for across the rocket, launch pad and launch range. And we have our on-site team operating out of the Rocket Lab ICF alongside our partners with support from operators out of Rocket Lab's Mission Control Center in Shadow Watch. Now let's start with our operators in the ICF so you can have an overview of who is in charge today. Starting with the front row closest to the screens, there sit and our partners see, guys, including NASA and the Mid-Atlantic yep. Spaceport. You can see that. Right, uh, we, we have a mission control room. Yep. As LC2 is located within the West, the Wallops flight facility, pardon me, which is a NASA range, the agency is supporting today's mission with operators across ground safety, range safety, system safety, and weather monitoring. In the middle row is a mix of Rocket Lab operators across avionics, which are the electrical systems driven by software that tell the rocket how to operate and where it should go and the ground control engineers are sitting there too. The operator managing the propellant loading system for Electron is closer toward the middle, sitting next to two engineers from Mars. At the back of the room on the left, we have mission management and our vehicle control specialist or VCON, and on the right, our leadership team offering executive support for the mission, sitting next to our IT engineer. In the middle, we have our Electron Stages operator with the call name Stage, who monitors Electron's propellant tanks, pressures, fuel usage, engine ignition and firing, and overall status of the engines. And then finally, next to her, we have our Launch Director, who leads all of the operators for this mission and has overall responsibility for the safety and success of the launch. Switching now to Rocket Lab's Mission Control Center, or MCC in Auckland. In the front row is our RF engineer looking after our communication systems between Electron and our global ground stations, and our ICE operator managing instrumentation and control engineering. At the end of the middle row on the right is Flight Analysis, who watch over our trajectory data for the mission as it relates to our range and mission safety criteria. Next to them are our shadow operators for stage and beacon, and our guidance, navigation, and control operators who make up the end of that middle row. They monitor onboard navigational systems and guidance computer software on Electron, and are responsible for determining the position of Electron's first, second, and third stages in space. 
At the back, we have ComOps looking after all data, voice, and video communication systems for launch. And then finally, Rocket Lab's launch safety officer and the shadow support for the launch director. Avionics, LD countdown. LD Avionics. Can you confirm the stage two umbilical puff is nominal? Confirmed. And confirm HVB balancing is disabled? Confirmed. And confirm internal HVB heaters are disabled? Confirmed. Com ops, LD countdown. Go ahead. Can you confirm that the video streams are in sync? Can confirm. Okay, and I confirm that the primary abort switch and watchdog are configured and ready, and I am actively monitoring countdown cord, LV cord, range cord, and safety net. Uh, at this time, we do plan a T minus 12 minute hold while we wait for further balloon data as the uh, upper level winds die down. And there you go. As I told LD, you guys. GC on countdown. GCLD. The umbilical arm and prime sequence is complete. Copy, thank you. So there you have it. We have a hold. We'll be having a hold at T minus 12 minutes or so because we are facing a red on the upper level winds right now. And other than that, things are looking good uh, because uh, Rocket Lab's Electron finally launching from Virginia US soil that is that itself is amazing if if I talk about rocket lab their neutron rocket which is supposed to hopefully uh, uh, actually you know if neutron launches from Virginia I don't think so Antares will be there in operation because then it will be going to the ISS too and uh, if it will be going to the ISS then the only then the Antares role will be fully off because it, it is costlier it is uh, uh, difficult to maintain and uh, well it's not uh, it does not have a very good turn ar turnaround time so um, i am hoping that the neutron also comes into existence because that is also a very cool rocket in which uh, the second stage just pops out of the fairing then the fairing closes and then the whole rocket comes back uh, for the landing that itself is a very amazing uh, uh, thing to even imagine when when it was announced I all remember right now also when the neutron announcement was there I was at a wedding and I was so excited that <laughs> the the wedding was going on and uh, it was you know uh, uh, climax of that wedding in which uh, they were getting actually uh, to totally engaged or what should whatever you say that that was the climax of the wedding and I, I was there sitting on my with my phone and uh, looking LD at the announcement PM. what yeah, is the actual one. announcement there NASA PMLT please confirm receipt of the one hour partial balloon data and be advised that the 15 minute balloon has been released copy can confirm receipt of the T minus one hour partial balloon data, and thank you on the T minus 15. You know, we, we need these uh, um, upper level winds, weather, and uh, other space weather basically, whenever a rocket launches, or even for the aircrafts, also suffer sometimes. We need these kind of weather conditions. So rather than just, I know it's a very, very, very cheap way to launch weather balloons and then get the uh, real time data of all those things. Uh, rather, rather than, uh, you know, having that, we must be having some permanent solution in space or in, uh, I don't know, maybe a solar airplane, which just keeps on revolving around that, uh, you know, uh, country or something using the power of the solar uh, panels LD, Vicon, Katam. that is actually Vicon. a plan Vicon, T minus 30 minute milestone sequence 48 is complete copy sequence 48 complete thank you
still going in for the countdown so we'll have to wait and see but yeah as i was saying that um, it is it is a thing which is in plans by HAL Hindustan Aeronautics Limited which is supposed to make a airplane which runs on solar power so it can stay on air for almost you can say infinite amount of time how no matter uh, you know for how long you want you just note that we have just reached the T minus 12 minute hold we'll be holding at this point for uh, further balloon data and I uh, will update as soon as I can all right And at this time, we will not be proceeding with the go no go poll until we confirm that we are happy with the balloon data. All right, guys, there you have it. We are on a hold, and uh, it's a two hour launch window, so uh, we still have much, 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 much time left. So we don't have to worry about the, um, you know. If, if we'll get to see this launch or not. Okay, as we heard it there from Mission Control, those upper level winds are expected to be out of bounds at the T06 p.m. liftoff time, and we have gone into a hold to wait for that additional weather balloon data. So uh, as we wait for that hold, we'll be going into a hold here ourselves on this broadcast too, but we will come back and share updates from Mission Control as we receive them. Stick with us though, and keep your fingers crossed for a drop in those wind levels. Cool. All right. So yeah. Um. What of what was I saying? Yes. So the launch window is of two hours, and we are looking good for an not looking good for an all time lift off right now. Whatever. I don't know what I'm saying right now. So, uh, might be my sleep talking. So yeah. Uh. Yeah. As I was uh, talking about uh, what the neutron neutron rocket. Yeah. So. At the, I still remember at that wedding I was uh, hooked up on my phone uh, watching the announcement and when they showed us the uh, animations in which how the neutron rocket would look like it would be a single piece rocket literally a single piece rocket from the outside uh, we obviously know something has come out of it that is the second stage as well as the payload but still a pairing which can just open up and then uh, push the second stage away with the payload and then close up and then come back down for another flight is an amazing concept and uh, what actually impressed me was uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's, rela it's it, that it would be launching from virginia and uh, since it would be launching from virginia and it, the payload capacity is also uh, high enough for it to launch Cygnus spacecraft so uh, the Cygnus spacecraft and other ISS resupply missions could be actually be acquired by uh, rocket labs also um, uh, after the SpaceX so it would be an amazing sight to see uh, although ISS life is still in concern because we don't know how long the ISS will stay up let me just tell you that uh, to uh, talking about the ISS ISS should stay up no matter what it might it might happen that we can have an uh, end of the government contract in like next 5 to 10 years but um, I am pretty sure some private company or startup would take over and then just fully upgrade it or something like that would happen and uh, it would still remain in orbit I am telling you it's, it's not gonna get decommissioned uh, that's for sure some private company will take over and uh, renovate it or do something like that and uh, basically make something out of it so uh, ISS will be there but talking about the launches to ISS uh, the crews, uh, the resupplies to ISS, well, that would be a thing to see in the future. Hey, John. Uh, hey, Storm Chaser, how are you? Uh, we, if you are still, if you are just joining in, guys, let me just. Uh, uh, inform you that we are on a hold because of the upper level winds 
and we we have a two hour launch window so we'll have to wait for the upper level launch uh, winds to clear up and hopefully that will happen and then we should see a launch of the electron rocket from the u.s soil well 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 that is something to see for the people living in u.s as well as uh, people nearby virginia because they haven't seen a new lock rocket launch from uh, virginia for a very long time it's all about the, those sounding rockets most of them most of the time it's sounding rockets or or maybe in taris and taris also does not launch at a very frequent uh, uh, pace so yeah if this starts launching from here you will see some frequent rocket launches from virginia that would happen for sure and uh, we don't have is there any major space update i'm not i don't think so the dear moon crew has been announced you must have you must be knowing about that although personally you know i am so happy for the for tim dot uh, he deserves to be in that i don't know about the others but he truly deserves to be in that uh, but talking about others this mission was supposed to be a, a mission which can inspire the common people for the space exploration right and i personally believe that the uh, the dear moon crew should have a good mix of the influencer as well as the common common people right now what we have in the crew is the is only the influencer i haven't seen any um, a small creator i think there is just one person who is a small creator uh, uh, or a small artist or something like that because then it would actually a, a good mix of talent and uh, the motive of this uh, dear moon but uh tim dodd i am so happy for him he'll be going around the moon just just imagine a person who just started a youtube channel and then he'll be flying around the moon <laughs> that is amazing to actually uh, see and experience that so yeah we are right now at a hold so uh, you also guys just uh listen up on some tunes we should be back with the up another update if that happens let me just check if we have any other update or so and yes argentina has won messi is the goat although i personally felt that uh, uh, you know M mbappe has uh, this uh, he's a good striker he's a great striker he's the best striker <laughs> because he he has the potential to convert all the chances that he has got at least for this today's match uh so it's very difficult uh, for anyone to stop him but uh it's a teamwork and yes yes argentina has won it messi has done, done it Okay, so we don't have uh, some uh, any other update. We still have to wait for the upper level winds to clear up. So if we, if I do get any update, I'll inform you. So all right, yeah, uh, I'll I'll tell you. I'll uh, <clears throat> inform you if, if we have any other update. So stay tuned and. Enjoy some tunes right now.
Hello, this is Jane McNichol with Rocket Lab here at Launch Complex 2. If you're just joining, we are in a hold in the Launch Countdown while we wait for out of bounds upper level winds to ease over Wallops Island. We've had a clean run through the count so far with all systems on Electron and the launch pad green for launch. The Hawkeye 360 payloads also remain healthy and clear for liftoff. It's just those pesky upper level winds we are waiting on now. We have a two hour launch window this evening that opens at 6 p.m. So still plenty of opportunities for a launch attempt tonight. We remain live on the broadcast while we wait and we'll continue to bring you updates as we receive them from Mission Control.
TDLD. Yes, sir. Uh, based on your COLA analysis, the uh, earliest time you could pick up the clock is 23-25-00 Zulu. Can you please confirm that? Yeah, uh, reviewing now will uh, confirm shortly. Copy. It's Muriel Baker with Rocket Lab here. If you have just tuned in for this Virginia is for launch lovers mission from LC2, we are in a hold in the launch countdown due to strong winds in the upper atmosphere above Electron's launch site. Our launch director has called for a hold in operations to wait for those winds to come down so we can fly within our safety bounds. The team is assessing the next best time to set our T0 liftoff time for, but otherwise Electron remains in a state of readiness, same as the Hawkeye payloads, and we'll continue to let you know how things are tracking. Great. There you go, that was a brief update that they are still looking in for the new launch time, but uh we are we should be having a launch hopefully those upper winds clear up you know guys you you are saying that the clouds are clear and the weather looks good it's because of the upper level winds and the upper level winds are so strong that the clouds are not there the clouds uh, just got pushed away <laughs> so the cloud the today the weather is clear the sky is looking good just because of those upper level winds and uh, it's kind of a you can say a blessing in disguise for you guys <laughs> hopefully uh, those uh, winds slow down and uh, uh, we get to see this launch thank you so much gods dark messia for sharing it if you if you guys uh, have friends who would love to watch these uh, this live stream uh, watch the rocket launch who does not like to watch a rocket launch so just
Now, tonight's mission might be from a NASA range, but it's not a NASA payload. Electron has been the ride to orbit for several NASA satellites, though, including the Capstone spacecraft that we sent to the moon earlier this year. While we wait for these upper-level winds to ease off, let's look back at that mission.
If you are just tuning into tonight's launch, you'll have noticed Electron is still on the pad, and that's thanks to some strong upper-level winds keeping us grounded for now. The launch director, though, has played us, placed us into a T-minus 12-minute hold while we wait for balloon data to determine whether the winds are easing. Tonight's launch window does extend to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, so we have time to sit and enjoy this beautiful but chilly Wallops night. Stay tuned for updates.
A reminder, while you're here with us on the broadcast, as we await liftoff, we are also waiting for upper-level winds to die down so that we can launch safely. Virginia is for launch lovers will be our very first mission from this launch pad at Wallops Island, but Electron has launched 32 times before from our first launch site in New Zealand, Launch Complex 1 on the Mahia Peninsula. There, at our own private range, we have not one, but two launch pads for the Electron rocket. With those two pads and the one here at NASA Wallops Flight Facility, we have up to 132 launch opportunities every year. Let's take you back to February earlier this year when we opened our second pad at Launch Complex 1 and have our CEO, Peter Beck, explain the benefits of operating multiple launch pads.
while rockets are the aim of the game today for our first launch from LC2. Earlier in the year, our team in Albuquerque recently delivered solar panels for NASA's gateway power and propulsion element. We sat down with some of the team to hear their thoughts. This project is very exciting because we are taking very small light modular designs. All right, still we don't have any other update, guys. Uh, we we are still uh, looking red for the upper level winds. Uh, hopefully, let uh, I'm hoping so it clears up because it's like 5:30 a.m. here and I have office tomorrow. Uh, I hope it clears up before um, it clears up just quickly because I I would like to sleep and uh, hopefully hopefully it launches today. Uh, we have a launch window remaining till um, about uh, 42 minutes in the launch window we are remaining. So uh, hopefully we'll get we'll get the answer soon whether we are launching today or not are very stringent. Solero has had to do a lot of qualification work to ensure that these specific innovative designs are able to withstand these, uh, these environments. The temperature ranges are very extreme and they need to be extremely reliable because once they're in space, you can't go out and fix them. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a challenge. You know, to be a part of something that's actually impacting our future as human beings. It's, it's interesting. I never could have imagined I, I'd be a part of it, uh, but I do recall specifically the, uh, I believe, Apollo 17, which we knew and knew ahead of time uh, was going to be the last visit to the surface. And uh, I remember being a little sentimental. It will be exciting to return for a lot of reasons. It's great to be a part of that return. It's pretty overwhelming to think you know, that it will be <laughs> in space, in, in lunar orbit, and uh, I, it, it's just, it's awesome. It's pretty awesome. Uh, some of the things I've learned being part of this project, um, how important teamwork is. Very proud of the team here at Solero, having executed this from concept to completion here. So the, the design team, the engineers that were involved with this from day one to develop the technology, get the design through to meet all the requirements, and then the production team that developed the capabilities to actually produce this at volume has been a big deal. So very proud of what the team's been able to accomplish here. Um, it's something I never thought I'd be a part of, um, never even dreamed about. Um, it's exciting to be part of the future. It's an unparalleled feeling knowing that you're part of advancing humanity's adventure into space.
Hello again. We are continuing to wait for strong upper level winds to come down during tonight's launch window for Virginia is for launch lovers. It has just gone 6.56 p.m. local time, which means we have another hour or so to be able to launch tonight's mission. And Electron is standing by and ready to fly from the pad with our mission partner, Hawkeye 360, a radio frequency analytics provider from right here in Virginia. Now, with our state-based customer and our launch pad here on Wallops Island, Virginia really is for launch lovers. And if you see yourself amongst the team launching satellites on Electron and in the future on our much larger rocket, Neutron, then there is a place for you. Here's more about the available opportunities right here in Virginia. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, and just go. Two, one. Lift off the vehicle, get the pad. We're creating a lot of new things here, right? So we're, we're kind of pioneering the future and it's really how much do you want to get involved? How much do you want to learn about something? And it seems like the opportunities here are really just endless. Having one another's back is one of our core values. So we try and work together as a team to deliver exceptional results. Cultural impact was something that really drew me. It's like we are here because we like to be here and we don't want to leave and we want to build things that are amazing. I feel very honored to be part of this project. Every mission, it's, it's a challenge, but it's just so rewarding as a professional and as a, as a woman to be part of it. If you want to learn about something, you could always just approach someone within the company and learn about it. That kind of goes to the culture here as well, because we're all really close here. I consider the people I work with here some of my best friends. Yeah, you know, I, I really look forward to showing up every day, and I learn a lot from them too. Everybody here is just brilliant. Collaboration is key, right? When you when you're doing innovative things, it's just ultra important that everybody's communicating effectively and and on the same page and working well together. But we often like force the communication. We, we send people to New Zealand. New Zealand folks come here, right? We want to make sure that we have constant communication through the design phase into production. And that comes from the people. I, I think I think that's actually part of the reason why I really like the small company feel, right? Because it's easy to recognize all of the effort that you put into, into your work. And that allows for like actual movement within the company. I will have to say this is the first time that I feel happy every day working. I love the culture of this place, the people, it's bright, it's amazing, but they're very humble. And I have to say that starts from the CEO. Peter, as a CEO, he's not only the technical lead, but the personnel lead as well. He's incredibly capable and technical engineer, but at the same time, he's also very pragmatic. Yeah, he's, he's just another member of the team, right? Like, yeah, he is the founder and the owner, but he's really just another member of the engineering team as well. Rocket Lab, it, it, it does start with the mission. I think it starts with the people. There's an incredible team here that has both expertise, but also an incredible sense of teamwork tied to delivery on those missions. And for me, I think it's the best of both worlds that you still get the innovative feel of a startup with also the maturity of a company that brings our track record as well as the scope of, of 1,500 people across multiple locations to the forefront. So you're at the starting point of the next phase of, of kind of Rocket Lab's journey to, to growth and success as we continue to stand up new locations like Virginia as well as integrate in a lot of exciting companies that have joined the company in the last year. Lift off, vehicle skid the pad. Head to rocketlabusa.com forward slash careers for more information.
A quick update from Rocket Lab Mission Control. We do remain in that T minus 12 minute hold for upper level winds, but we are also receiving updates of a vessel approaching the exclusion zone. So range teams will be dispatching folks to keep the boat in the safe zone away from the launch corridor. But this is just a friendly reminder to stay clear of safety zones on launch day, please. No one wants a scrub for that. A quick update from the launch team here. We have received the latest weather balloon data and I'm pleased to report that it is trending in the right direction. The launch team is assessing a potential new T0, but just a reminder that we have just shy of an hour left tonight with the window scheduled to close at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll keep you posted on that new T0 when it's available.
Thanks for sticking with us on the broadcast for tonight's mission, Virginia is for Launch Lovers. In case you missed it, just a few moments ago, we got the report from Mission Control that the upper level winds are trending down in the right direction. That means we may have an opportunity for liftoff during tonight's launch window, which remains open until 8 p.m. Eastern Time. The operations team are working through the logistics for that right now and will let us know if a new T-0 can be set shortly. We'll bring you that update as soon as we have it.
Good evening from Launch Complex 2 on the chilly eastern shore of the United States. As you may have noticed, we're currently in a hold at T-12 minutes due to our favorite nemesis, upper level winds. Earlier we heard from operators they were seeing winds trend in the right direction for potential liftoff towards the end of the window, which we have open until 8 p.m. Eastern or 0100 hours UTC. We'll keep you updated as we learn more information from Mission Control.
all right things are still the same and uh, obviously we had a wayward vote in between not so sure what's the status about that the uh, thing uh, what's the uh, status on the range but uh, still the ra the weather is still looking not so good we'll have to wait and see we have around uh, 23 minutes left in the launch window and we uh, stopped the countdown at T minus 12 minutes or so so uh, you can say in about 10 to 12 minutes from now we should get in a proper update whether we are uh, going in with the launch or not see the thing is uh, you might be wondering that if the winds are not so good why are they pushing it for the launch well uh, this is the last uh, uh, day of the launch window the launch window actually started from december 13 and it went uh, through 19th okay you can see at the bottom of the screen corner there we have the time ticking down from t minus 22 minutes that is the last possible opportunity we have for this launch window tonight but we are still waiting for those uh, strong winds to die down up above uh, electron on the pad there so just to reiterate that clock is stations, ticking down to our last possible opportunity while we wait for an update from mission control targeting a t0 of 759.58 local that is our last opportunity we are still monitoring upper level winds um, is uh, still borderline but we're uh, doing everything we can here So like right, we okay. So we have they are counting down for the last bit uh, of their launch window. And uh, as I was saying that why are they doing it is because the launch wind today is the last day for the launch window. And if they don't launch it today. They will have to wait for a long time uh, for another window to come up. They had a license for the December 13th to December 19th launch. And uh, since December 19th is not coming through, hopefully if it is, if, if it does not come through, then they need to apply for another license and then uh, wait for another launch window to happen. The stars to align, the planets to align and then only they can do it. So that that is the reason why they are still pushing it. Hope, let's hope uh, that uh, we get to see the launch. It's almost 6 a.m. here and I haven't slept till now. It's so, so, so uh, I'm feeling so sleepy right now, but I have to be awake for you guys. Uh, make sure that everything is understandable for you. So right now we are T minus 20 minutes and uh, the clock is still ticking down but um, we 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 won't be uh, this they they have just you know in hope that the wind may die down they have started the countdown uh, we we still are not looking good for the on time lift off but still they are uh, believing the gods that the weather gods will have some mercy on us and uh, let's hope uh, this thing launches today and storm chaser ask uh, can you tell us about how the upper level winds happen so uh, storm chaser well discussed <laughs> this question is coming from you is amazing so um yeah so the thing is the winds how are they formed the winds are actually formed because of the difference in the pressure there is an area where they, we have a high pressure. There is an area where we have a low, low pressure. So you can say um, and the winds and the air or you can say the fluids in general move from the high pressure area to a lower pressure area. So uh, this is the reason why the winds happen whenever a wind happen that uh, in and it's very common uh, in the coastal regions as the Virginia that the they are kind of windy because there is a high pressure region uh, uh, and a low pressure region generated between the seas and the land there is a difference between those pressures 
so there is that that is the reason why that we have so such a strong winds uh in the co coastal regions all right and talking about the upper level winds well uh we in the atmosphere we have uh, different layers of uh, uh, air right so the thing is that only that uh, actually the the air which is closer to the earth is more dense and it's very difficult for it to move uh, and obviously it gets so many uh, what should i say um, obstacles in between to maybe slow it's slow itself down but regarding the upper level winds it's less dense it does not get any obstacles and it can move freely wherever it wants so uh, upper level winds are mostly you know high in velocity so uh, the and uh, at that point of time uh, uh, during the upper level if the upper level winds are very much high and the rocket is going through max q it won't be good for the rocket to um it won't be good for a ro for that rocket so um yeah we are uh, hoping that we get to see the launch today i'm uh, whoa feeling so sleepy but uh, hopefully this thing launches and we get to see the launch I am. I hope you have got your answers, Tom Chaser. Hey, Wildflower, welcome to the stream. Where were you? I guess your notifications again messed up, right? <laughs> Avionics, LD countdown. LD Avionics. Can you confirm internal HVB heaters are disabled? Confirmed. Uh, why were you so wildflower? I hope everything is all good with you. Copy. And can you confirm that the stage two umbilical POF is nominal? Confirmed. And confirm HVB balancing is disabled? Confirmed. And come up, sell the comp cord. Sorry, countdown. countdown. Go ahead, LD. <laughs> Apologies. Can you confirm that the video streams are in sync? Yes, I can. Thank you. And all stations, I can confirm that the primary abort switch and watchdog are configured and ready. And at this time, I'm actively monitoring countdown cord, LV cord, range cord, and safety net. This time we are not planning a T minus 12 minute hold. And we will be proceeding with the go no go poll at T minus 12 minutes, but please raise any issues you foresee immediately. Well, 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 so we are T minus 40 minutes from the launch. Everything kind of looks good. Uh, they won't be sto stopping at T minus 12 now. So uh, that's and at good. this time the T minus 18 minutes check sequence is complete.
minus 13 minutes from the launch uh, we will get to see the launch uh, you know the go no go po bowl but uh, still don't have hopes for the uh, lift off to happen we still have to wait and see we will have to uh, look out for that uh, go no go ball though if we get to hear that what's if we get to hear any issues or something like that hello again in the not too distant future when strong winds will hopefully not be an issue we have two exciting missions set to fly from this nasa range for the agency itself the mission names are tropics and that stands for time resolved observations of precipitation structure and storm intensity with a constellation of small sets quite a long name but an exciting mission to send four cubesats across two launches into low earth orbit to measure temperature humidity and precipitation structure to track the evolution of tropical cyclone intensity these missions are set to launch in the middle of next year and we cannot wait to see another few electrons on the pad in quick succession Um, Storm Chaser, it's uh, going good. The countdown is fine. T minus 12 minutes, 12 seconds from the launch. Okay, so the the electron is looking good. So if we are going in for the launch, let me just sum it up for you guys. So today we are going at uh, um 550 kilometer, 40 degree altitude, 40 degree All inclination. All stations LD on countdown. Proceeding with the final pull for launch. Go, no go sequence. Stage. Such as go. Avionics. This is go. GNC. GNC is no go. GNC is no go for upper level winds. Uh. Copy. Uh, Vcon. Vcon's go. T1. Let's go. GC. GC is go. PLS. PLS is go. Mars CE. Mars CE is go. Mars Ops. Mars Ops is go. Mars One. Mars One is go. NASA GSO. GSO go. NASA RSO. RSO is go. MM. MM is go. LDSUP. LD sub is go. And NASA TD. NASA TD is go. Okay. All stations, um, unfortunately, we are going to be no-go today. We'll have to hold the count. Um, can't say we didn't give it our all. Um, vehicle is perfect. Pad is perfect. Everything is perfect except for those upper-level winds. So uh, we'll come. Oh, dude. <laughs> All right, guys. So, uh, there you have it. We are no go for the launch. F's in the chat, please. F's in the chat. So, uh, at the final T minus 10 minute mark or so, we got to know the gnc is a no-go for the launch gnc is nothing but the guidance and navigation control systems and uh, obviously they wouldn't be a go if the weather uh, the weather is not good hello again from launch complex 2 well the team put up a good fight but unfortunately as you heard there those upper level winds got the better of us today and we will be standing down from a launch attempt we do though have a backup opportunity tomorrow so we'll oh. see you back here then thanks for joining us for today's attempt we look forward to bringing you the liftoff of virginia is for launch lovers very soon well 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 their press kit said something else they had a license from 13 to 19 but i guess uh, they figured it out and we are gonna have a good uh, we have a backup launch window tomorrow also so uh, we would be seeing that and uh, we will be coming back for the launch tomorrow again so guys thank you so much for tuning in yes this happens in the launches the rockets 
does not get launched sometimes because of the weather or something like that and today the bad the weather the upper level winds to be precise had a better of them better of us or whatever you want to say so uh yeah we will uh, now i can go and sleep and uh, hopefully tomorrow we will get to see the launch again so what's the launch time we'll have to i'll be there with live with you i'm not so sure hopefully uh, it would be at the same time or so um we'll have to wait and see though but yeah so uh, thank you so much for tuning in guys uh, these kind of things happen but uh, do tune in tomorrow also and uh, hopefully we'll get to see the first launch of the rocket lab from the us soil Thank you so much for tuning in. Until then, this is Piyansh Roila. You just saw Rocket Gyan. Stay safe, stay healthy and bye-bye.